So the, the movement from, from text to sermon, as, as I think about biblical preaching and what does it mean to, to have a text truly shaped by, uh, a sermon truly shaped by the text, probably the, the key element uh, in my own approach to exegesis is to look for movement within the text. Where is a text going? Um, you can break exegetical work down into all kinds of small steps, whether it's doing word studies, looking at background, or anything else. But it's that, for me, the key element, and the one that I find most often informs my preaching, is movement. Maybe I can give a couple examples of, of what that would look like. If, say, I'm working in a passage out of the Gospel of John, um, say something like the story of the man born blind, you have um, things developing, changing, uh, tra you know, transpiring throughout the course of a passage. Uh, you find uh, initially uh, the man is silent. Uh, he's simply there along the street. Uh, the disciples talk about him, wondering what's behind his blindness. Uh, Jesus heals him. And then as the story progresses, th there's movement where the man begins to speak. Um, what do you say about what happened to you? Well, the man called Jesus healed me. Uh, well, we think we better have a wider hearing of this. So in before the Jewish authorities he goes. And well, what's going on? What happened? What do you say about it? Well, I think he's a prophet. And finally, there's further conflict over this, saying, no, we think he's a sinner because he healed on the Sabbath. The man will say, no, um, why do you want to hear what happened again? Do you want to become his disciples too? You know, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And they put him out of the synagogue. There's movement uh, throughout the course of the story that then culminates uh, when the man encounters Jesus uh, again. Jesus finds him and the man actually sees Jesus for the first time. He's not seen him before. He's only heard his voice. He now sees him and then confesses faith. I mean, for me, the movement is extraordinarily uh, interesting because it gets at that fundamental question of what happens when somebody meets Jesus. Does anything change? And I find elements of, of what, what changes a person's life, what, what really has an effect to be connected with those elements of movement w within the story. Um, as I've looked at, uh, or just kind of walked through that passage very briefly, looking at the movement and what ha what's happening to the to the man, you know, as as a, as a person, what's happening to him in terms of his relationships, he's not staying the same through the story. His perceptions are changing. His relationships with other people are not static; they're changing. He has to re kind of reestablish his identity with his neighbors. He has to kind of reestablish who he is in relationship to his wider faith community. He has to reestablish uh, what's the nature of his own faith con confession at the end. There's all of these changes internally, socially, faith-wise. It's all happening. Now, as I think about that, okay, how might one capture the movement of a passage like that uh, in terms of this movement now from the uh, movement within the story to what I call life issues. Um, that's where I find those connections being made between what's happening within the story and what's happening between me proclaiming the story and my people who are listening. Um, 